Hey everybody, and welcome to the PC Gamer Show. My name is Tom Marks, assistant editor here at PC Gamer. With me is James Davenport, associate editor. How you doing, James? Super duper. And of course, special guest, Andy Schatz, the founder of Pocket Watch Games. Mm-hmm. How are you, Andy? I'm doing fantastic. Thanks so for having me. Pocket Watch is the developer of Monaco. Yep. What's mine is what's yours is mine. Mm-hmm. I always get those mixed up. <laughs> <laughs> it's because the title is intentionally reversed. Ah, uh-huh, no. there you go. See, it's tricky. And he's here to show off his new game, Tooth and Tail, uh, which we'll be playing live later in the show. A game that James and I got to play yep. last night uh, during GDC and really enjoyed. So I'm glad we could uh, mm-hmm. have you come on last minute and Sweet. show it off. Yeah. I'm I'm super excited to be here and, and showing it off. It's uh, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, cool. and we'll That's also cool. be talking about the news recently that J.J. Abrams is still working on a Portal movie and a Half-Life movie and kind yeah. of the implications of that, whether that's actually a good thing or not. <laughs> um, and then we'll also be talking about GDC, which is going on, the Game Developers Conference going on right now in San Francisco, where we are geographically located. <laughs> So we're all very excited about that, and you'll be spending some time at that conference all this week. Uh, We'll also have a Cat Fantastic quiz for you, uh, the return of it as usual. It's always the return because I I wait way too long between Mm -hmm. the quizzes, so it feels like it's gone forever, and then we have a triumphant return one week. Uh, Then we'll be... Hmm? I'm not dead. Yeah, basically. (laughs) And we'll be, like I said, doing Tooth and Tail, talking to Andy about Tooth and Tail, and showing it off. It's an arcade RTS. It's a very, very fun game. Uh, and finally, taking your questions from Twitch chat. So first, we want to start, start the show the same way we always do, which is uh, what we've been playing recently. James, what have you been playing as of late? Oh, man. I've been in this deep, dark pit called The Division. Uh, <laughs> I've been reviewing that game. Uh, and I just finished up uh, editing it. I think so. That's going to go up maybe today, tomorrow. The game or your review? The review. Excuse okay. me. Yeah, I finished. <laughs> That's a game you don't really finish, for better or for worse. I think for worse. Um, ooh. Yeah. Ooh. I, I, <laughs> last week, I think we uh, we talked about how we were surprised by how much we actually enjoyed it. Right? Yeah. How we were surprised we actually. And this week, the theme is the reverse of that. I'm surprised by how much I didn't enjoy it. Oh, pulling the rug out. I know. Yeah. I know. Um, and, and that's mainly because uh, I, I, I was in love with the cover shooting, and like I think they got this really cool. <clears throat> excuse me, strategic team play, mm. cover shooter down. They have some really cool scenarios um, and campaign missions, and it, it's just a gorgeous rendition of Manhattan. It's It's got the best clutter in any game I think I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah, meaningful clutter. Yeah. That, you know, uh, there's garbage bags where garbage bags should be, and you want to look at them because they look so great. <laughs> or uh, Chris and I, I think I said this last week, we spent a huge... You uh, live in San Francisco, and you, you <laughs> want to look at the garbage bags on the corner? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was perhaps a bad example. <laughs> but uh, I, there was a department store level where Chris and I, we just, like, we spent a huge amount of time shooting the different props to see how they would react. And so many of them react in, like, interesting ways. I thought you were going to say shopping. <laughs> we went shopping. It's some good deals in this Nordstrom Rack. <laughs> it's all free. It's all free. Um... Yeah, I think it's I think it's a game that's unnecessarily bloated by its its RPG um, mechanics. Uh, it seems to be the new trend, uh, thanks to Destiny, maybe, um, where a lot of these games that already do everything at once, in order to kind of get their hooks in and ensure, uh, y- y- you know, a future. Um, or at least like have have room to attach more modules and content updates and so on. Uh, the RPG, you know, uh, system seems to, or an MMO RPG system specifically seems to have, you know, proved that's possible. World of Warcraft is still putting out uh, updates and expansions and EverQuest and so on. And so I think a lot of games want a piece of that pie, um, and. Uh, it fails. It fails miserably <laughs> in my That hesitation, I feel like, before you said that is like defines the division for me yeah. to a certain yeah, extent. Yeah, well, it, I mean, the uh, the XP growth and character growth is 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 a huge grind. It's basically the you get most of your XP through doing side missions, which are really shallow and repetitive. Uh, the loot itself is, I mean, you might get a better gun with better stats, and if you like number crunching and optimizing characters for that kind of thing, you might 
you know, find something to dig there, but uh, all of the loot behaves the same. So every assault rifle shoots like the last assault rifle. There's just math, different math happening behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of hard to get attached or interested by, you know, the lore. I feel like that's like 90% of games these days. Yeah. It's all Borderlands, Destiny, just is Borderlands the one to blame for it? That's a good question because, like, I, I feel know. like Borderlands was one of the first games to popularize that infinite that art, yeah, yeah, the infinite content RPG guns uh -huh. sort of thing. I would argue that like Borderlands had some had a weapon that like cursed at you when you shot it. Yeah, yeah. so it was you know it, it, it played around with that and certainly, had some fun with it. Certainly, the division must have a, have moments that are are memorable. Uh, it does. I mean, but it has nothing to do with the RPG. Systems okay. and I, th I think it's just kind of held back and bloated. The sure. the campaign itself is I think it's probably about seven to eight hours of really good like tight cover shooting and it's a lot of fun and it's really challenging when you have a good team together and you're you know talking to each other. I'll flank here, you throw out this turret, heal me, yada yada. It's really fun, but it, it's bloated yeah. by about twenty two hours of grinding to get to the next level to be able to do the next campaign mission and so on. Yeah. So. <clears throat> I mean, uh, the review will be going up soon. You can kind of read my final thoughts there. Uh, I think uh, overall I'm pretty disappointed with it. That doesn't mean it can't change and grow. Um, but as of right now, I think it's just kind of a really shallow uh, bummer example of where I think a lot of bigger games feel like they need to go um, or pressured to go. But uh, I, When I look at a game that is also a numbers game like Rogue Legacy, but so much of the content is based around experiential tweaks rather than number tweaks. Mm -hmm. So it's like you're colorblind, you know, and that's yeah. an experiential <laughs> tweak, and that is a me becomes a memorable experience. Exactly. You know, or or even just you know being a being a dwarf or being a giant, you know, those sorts of things are things that make you chuckle. Yeah, you and might. Those be... are also the things that make you remember that specific run, or like right. that time yeah. I was colorblind and right. I made it this far. You right. might be going through the same thing, but it's it's yeah, it's it's changed by what you're doing and how you can behave, and mm -hmm. yeah, it's division. It's just yeah, I, rifle. I never got the impression <laughs> that anyone online that I saw playing the division was having a different a different experience than me. Interesting, uh, which I think is is kind of a problem in a game that wants you to play it with like thousands of other people and a lot and repetitively. Okay. But yeah, it was it was it, it's funny that you bring up kind of how we talked about the division last week yeah. because we I had a very similar experience where last week I was I was pretty happy with the division mm -hmm. i was excited to keep playing it and then i got about eight hours in and i was just kind of like okay i've been doing the same thing for eight hours and i haven't changed my outfit in seven hours you yeah. know and like, <laughs> but how long did you play firewatch and did you enjoy it <laughs> i didn't play firewatch at all i did so. <laughs> i did it was three hours and it was just condensed amazing storytelling so you got eight hours of, so that means the division you got eight hours of enjoyment out of the division so that means that the division was eight thirds times better than firewatch yeah that's right? how it works yeah right so if you give five what do you guys give firewatch oh Isn't, what are we know? like 80 something it was so it, it the was division good. should get on a hundred and seventy. That's about. the math. That's the, the math, math checks out. I don't think we can <laughs> we can deny that. I saw someone actually in the comments of one of our articles once saying that they do that basically. They calculate specifically whether they should buy a game for how many hours you can play it over cost of game. Uh -huh. And like that's basically their rating system. Yeah. Uh -huh. Which is amazing. <laughs> that's just ridiculous to me. Uh, okay. If you had stopped playing the division yeah. at eight hours. Would you, and and that would not be a responsible thing to do as a games journalist. But let's say you did. Let's say you did. Do you think that the review score would be higher? It's kind of uh, an interesting question, right? Oh, absolutely. Like, yeah. Like if yeah. you just had that first impression of it. Mm -hmm. If that's if it's mm -hmm. stuck, yeah. If it was eight hours and that was like. And and see, most people when they buy a game, maybe not most people that listen to the PC games Twitch, you know, <laughs> PC gamer Twitch, but uh, most people that buy games will typically only play two hours of, it, of the games that they play. That's true. Yeah. That's you true. know what I mean? And so there's something to be said for the idea that, like, The Division is a great game for people who are only planning to play five hours of it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> and know? I Yeah, I think and I think a lot of, you know, people might play just a couple hours of this a week and string it out over a, a couple months. And, like, I think in bite-sized chunks, it's probably something to kick back to, and it's fine. But, mm. yeah, as a whole experience, it's... Uh, Yeah, it's got some issues. 
Design. That'd be interesting to do, like, impulse game reviews. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> game reviews specifically for people that are just going to buy the game, play it for five hours, and move on. Right. It's like, is this a good game for you? I guess in that case, The Division would be fine. Right. But Especially with game sales these days, everyone has a giant bloated live Steam library. Uh-huh. You know? oh. And then typically, don't don't play. They wait till it's on sale. So, like, if you're waiting for The Division to go on sale, which maybe it won't because it's not that type of game. Right. But if you are waiting for it to be $10 and you buy it as an impulse buy... Yeah, maybe that's a different experience. Yeah, mm-hmm. maybe. True. I, uh, I'll, I'll breeze by what I've been playing recently just real quick because it's pretty similar to last week. I was playing a little bit of The Division, and then I was also playing Hex, Shards of Fate, the mm-hmm. card game. Uh, I said last week also that I hadn't touched the multiplayer yet, and I still haven't. I've been playing Hex basically every night just playing the single-player campaign, and I've I've just still found it really compelling. Mm-hmm. I I Basically, my opinions haven't changed. I'm still really enjoying it. I think the writing is like... It's not amazing, but it's like surprisingly good for like the single player of a card game, right? <laughs> like, it, I was not expecting to go into it, like yeah. actually reading the text boxes, right? But okay. it's 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 all right. It's fun. Neat. Uh, what have you been playing though, Andy? Besides Tooth and Tail, I imagine yeah. you've been playing a lot of that. I, uh, yeah, I actually, <laughs> um, uh, you know, when you're making a game, you mm. you, you play it a lot to test it. Sure. Um, I have. Like played for fun. I played Tooth and Tail for fun a lot more than I ever played Monaco for fun. Huh, um, cool. I these these days in the afternoon, I'll just sit back and play a couple hours. We have a very small tight knit community of people mm-hmm. that uh, we've invited into a, a private pre alpha that just hang out with us in a Discord channel all the time. Mm. And so on the afternoons, we'll just like play. You know, what's the current meta? What's the what's the balance? Like, let's test out some new stuff. You know, and and it's just fun. Yeah. Um, so I'm playing. A, I do play a lot of it when I'm taking breaks from from coding. Um, <laughs> uh, but I also um, have been. I have not actually finished Firewatch. Um, mm. My uh, um, I wanted to play it with my wife as like a you know a co-pilot type right. of game. Yeah. Um, she has only been so so into it. For her, mm-hmm. it's been a a little slow. I think. Um, and I expected it to be more, so I'm trying to find like that moment when she's in the mood to play my yeah. watch with mm-hmm. me. So it's been, even though it's a very short game, it's been something that I've it's I've taken some time to get through. Um, kind of surprised me. I thought it would be a good co-pilot game, you know, someone mm-hmm. a, a good like sit together and and go through the story. But um, other than that, uh, really board games. Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective is oh, I've uh, heard one of this. that. Yeah, yeah. it's a. Um, and I would love to make the video game version of a. No one's ever done a procedurally generated mystery solving like uh, yeah. mm-hmm. like murder mystery game before, and it's my dream to do this sometime. <laughs> it's like a murder, <laughs> like a um, uh, what Colonel's Bequest back in the day. Like a, 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 you know, someone is murdered in the mansion, and the eight people are stuck there. Basically, Clue, right? Mm-hmm. Except get make make the the solving of that mystery be something where you're actually come where you're actually solving them based on sort of real world clues and things mm. like that. Anyways, Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective is a is a board game of sorts, but it's really a choose your own adventure in a lot of ways mm-hmm. where you are given a and it came out in like 1986 and it just only recently got the repopularized. Yeah. It came out of the blue. Um, and all of a sudden everyone was playing it. Um, uh, basically it's uh, you're given an introduction to the crime and then you, uh, from that introduction, you just have to decide where to go and who to interrogate. Um, and you're trying to do, you're trying to solve the crime in as few steps as possible in order to solve it faster or, or as well as Sherlock hmm. solves it. Um, and so it's all things where it's like, it's like, oh, at the murder scene, the the um, uh, the little statuette was turned backwards, which implies that like, uh, it had something to do with Napoleon and so you are like you find out that like oh there's a guy that was playing Napoleon in a play and yeah, it, yeah, it's, yeah. Um, so you're doing it's all of those like Sherlockian um, yeah. uh, little leaps of logic that you have to make and you have to also know know what are the red herrings you know and you have to be like no that has nothing to do with it they're just they're like trying to confuse us with this thing that's interesting Um, it's interesting to hear of an old game coming back into fashion that way or at least even finding popularity now when it hadn't before I'm not sure if it hadn't before but because it seems like that kind of game, it's almost the perfect storm for it to be popular right now. Right. There's like yeah. three different yeah. Sherlock TV shows yep. going on. There have yep. been Sherlock Holmes movies. There's, you know, games, board games themselves have, haven't been this popular right. maybe ever, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. It, and, and especially social board games like that where you're, you're, most of the game is almost just talking, right? right. Like that, 
that type of thing is really, really popular. Yeah, it's um, uh, the way I typically like to design games um, is starting from a theme and then break down what are the mechanics that actually drive that theme. So that's mm -hmm. what we did with Monaco. The theme was heist movies. Like, mm -hmm. what are the mechanics that actually drive heist movies? And then can we turn those mechanics into a game using language that's f already familiar to game to gamers? Mm -hmm. So we use Pac-Man to sort of build all of the things that happen in heist movies. Um, and I feel like Sherlock Holmes is just perfect for that because <laughs> Sherlock Holmes is a game. It's already a game. Yeah. Like they've built mechanics into the game or into the stories, and it's all driven by by Oops. discrete mechanics. Um, and so that's just like I'll probably get beaten to the punch on this on my murder mystery game. But <laughs> you know, just imagine that like procedurally generated mansion with procedurally generated actual clues and procedurally generated characters that have hidden relationships to one another and you might overhear their conversations if you're in the right place at the right time mm. um, and then the lights go out and someone's dead you know <laughs> and, and uh, um, I would I would love that because that's that's all about telling emergent stories you know and it's like mm. and imagine even being able to name those characters after your friends you can imagine <laughs> that being a Twitch game right there oh hey um, did you see in, in a similar vein that Ubisoft just announced that they're doing, they're turning basically the popular card game Werewolf, mm. which is one of these party group social games, uh, physical, into a VR game. Really? Um, cool. uh, obviously, they're not saying that they are directly turning it into, sure. it's their right. own version of it, but um, yeah, it, it, in, in a similar vein, it is one of those social party games that has a lot of possibilities being directly turned into a video game, so mm -hmm. it's already happening, and I think that's that that shows kind of just how excited people are about board games in that sense, in that right. that social sense. And I think I think you're onto something, man. I think you uh -huh. need to be hire another team, get another <laughs> development going. I, I was gonna say switch projects, but I'm just too excited for Tooth and Tail now to have you do that. See, you say that, and then I hear you say, "Well, we liked the division before it came uh. out." <laughs> Actually, we kind of didn't like the division before it came yeah, out. Yeah. When we played the beta, we were cold on it. Then uh, it came out, we were warm on it again. Uh, and now it's like, it's Katy Perry up in here, man. It's, hot and cold. <laughs> it's not good. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, uh, let's let's move right along. Let's start talking about rumors and oh whispers and all that sort of stuff. What's not a rumor is that J.J. Abrams, director of the newest Star Wars and the Star Trek movies and that sort of deal... Uh, user of lens flare, <laughs> as we know him, has said that he is still working on a Portal and Half Life movies, mm -hmm. or two two separate movies, I assume, or maybe multiple movies, but separate projects. Not combining them is what I meant, uh, and and that's happening. They are working on. I think the last time they said they're working on scripts right now. Basically, they're yeah. trying to finalize something, and this is a a thing that's been happening for a while, right? J.J. Abrams said that he was talking to Gabe Newell about working together you know, two or three years ago. And then in 2010, Gabe Newell also said that people had optioned him for Half-Life scripts and they were all garbage and he didn't want any of them. So movies about Half-Life or Portal have been around, like rumors and talk of that has been around for a yeah. while. And the fact that we have one of the most popular directors in Hollywood right now saying, yes, I am working on these is I think a huge step forward in yeah. the idea of actually having them be made. So what I want to talk about today is kind of, are we excited about that? Are you hesitant? You know, what what is this a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Are these movies going to be garbage, doomed before they like they've even began because they just have too much to live up to? Or I, what what are you guys thinking so far? Because James, I know you're a huge Portal fan. Uh, you know, I I my thoughts are mostly incomplete. Uh, <laughs> it's uh, Valve. With their properties, doesn't really it, it, we haven't really seen them lent out in any fashion, um, and anything they do with those properties is usually uh, you know very much in the the vein that uh, we expect. It's like a Portal, it's tightly wound, like awesome comedic storytelling, but it depends a lot on interacting with the characters, like um, in the puzzles you do, and them commenting on things you do, and. Um, uh, in the VR game or the VR demo as well. I mean, I don't know how you make a Portal movie uh, exactly 
without making it just about the, the robots and Portal's not about shell, right? That's the problem. No, yeah, <laughs> yeah, and and like the uh, injecting like the like the player silent player protagonist into a movie like this, it would have to be just totally detached, I think, yeah. from the 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 game's narratives and about these robots, per, or maybe you could maybe have Cave Johnson or someone in there, um, established characters that we like already. Um, I mean, J.K. Simmons is already a incredibly yeah. popular screen actor. So J.K. Simmons, for those who don't know, is the voice of Cave Johnson in Portal 2. And, I mean, it would be easy to just cast him in that role in a movie, right? That would be natural. Yeah, basically a Portal prequel. Yeah. 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 yeah well, so done. that's a question. So you wouldn't want to see him follow any of the stories exactly? No, no. I mean, the, the Aperture, uh, Portal especially, and Half-Life, I don't know. Half-Life is a, is a whole other beast. But Portal especially is like... Like in in how the game is designed and in like how you how the fiction defines aperture science, it's like modular and it's stacked and it goes deep and it's just like perfect for episodic pocket universes, um, in the words of Valve. Uh, so I think like a portal movie would be great so long as they just don't feel like they owe anything to, you know, the the stories in the game at yeah. all. I, I mean, portal portal lives on its. Well, it's mechanics and it's script, right? Mm -hmm. um, Portal, the first Portal is probably, it's my top five games of all time. Yeah. So it's, it's really, really good and it's really tight. To me, Portal 2, which I did love, felt stretched out um, a little mm -hmm. a little bloated in comparison to Portal 1, even though it was fantastic as well. Yeah. Um, uh, but it, it, Portal 1, I think, the, to me, the thing that was so great about it was how singular it was, how... how um, uh, tight the experience was and I don't know that you could quite do that in a movie um, no. you you would definitely have to have Portal live on a fantastic script mm -hmm. and so <laughs> I can so if they have a fantastic script great the movie's good mm -hmm. um, if they don't then it's garbage it, yeah. it has to be fantastic yeah. though, because the mechanics you're going to have to invent a movie around Portal you're just <laughs> going to have to invent it. It, it you can't just take Portal and make and make a movie um so the rest of it is going to have to hang on whatever that script is. And yep. Half-Life's totally different. Half-Life hangs on its world, not yeah. its script, right? And it hangs on and to me the the if I can be critical of Half-Life and also Half-Life 2 is Half-Life 2 is probably in my top 10 games of all time. Um, so I love the series, but the, in the episodes when they start getting into the Vortigon uh, backstory it's, that to me that was like mitochlorians. <laughs> it was like the thing I love about Half Life is that everything's just kind of weird and you don't get it. Yeah. And it's like what is going on here? And everything is like the regular world, but just turned fifteen degrees to the side. And and it's really off off. Uh, you know, it, it sets you slightly on edge because it, it looks kind of normal but not at all. Yeah. And then when they start to explain it, and that's what I would worry, I think that this would be a much worse project for J.J. Abrams because I, because I think that it, if, you have, if you go into depth in explaining the world at all, um, it takes away from the world. Um, yeah. uh, I think that the world has to exist in a place that makes you uncomfortable in order... The, the best Half-Life is the parts of Half-Life that makes you uncomfortable. Yeah. The parts where you where the fog is too dense for you to see what's happening, um, you know where that where the head crab can come from anywhere. Yeah, and it, it'd be interesting to see either way, which like completely separate from if they do a new story, if they bring the old characters in, all that. Like it would be interesting to see what genres they go for mm -hmm. because right. Half Life could Half Life. I cannot imagine Hollywood making a Half Life movie without it being at least mostly an action movie. Yeah, like which kind of doesn't really scream Half-Life to me. Yeah. Half-Life had, like you said, a lot of horror moments. Ravenholm was terrifying. The first time you have to deal with head crabs and you like don't have guns is terrifying. Mm -hmm. But Portal, I, I don't even know. What genre? Comedy. What comedy. genre would Portal be? Right? You'd have to either like lean into it and cast Seth Rogen as Atlas. Or, oh like, God, no! <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I might argue that Half-Life wouldn't. Be a, would be best not as an action movie. Actually, I think it probably would be. Uh, I, I think I think when I think of Half Life, I, I, I'm reminded most of Quiet, like and uh, Stalker, for instance. Have you played uh -huh. Stalker uh -huh. or the movie Stalker? Even um, just a, a strange landscape, a slow journey through it, 
punctuated maybe by moments where things get loud and weird, but like you said, I don't know if Hollywood would really go for that. I just don't want to see like action movie hero right. in this world just tearing shit up. Yeehaw. <laughs> I, I want to see like quiet, slow tension and like a slow unraveling, which is kind of how I remember experience or my experience like in Half-Life 2 and Half-Life is like, like you were saying, it's like it's just something slightly off. And as you uh, tear through the environment and uh, explore, you might discover signs that point to things you don't quite recognize. And you might recognize symbols. You see the G-Man up there just walking away. And mm-hmm. he's this crazy, perfect enigma that they should never go into. Right. Don't yeah. not explain G-Man. Do not yeah. explain yeah. him. Um, but everything there is like perfect for this like just slow horror but thriller. But you know J.J. Abrams is going to add com- yeah. <laughs> There's going to be a comedic sidekick. Some, some kooky Vorganaut who's cl- <laughs> always tripping up and uh-huh. shit. Yeah. I think that you could get away also with uh, Portal having Chell as a silent protagonist still in the movie because they uh-huh. kind of sort of like mm-hmm. explained that in Portal 2 of like oh she's got brain damage or whatever. Mm-hmm. But I mean Mad Max pulls off the nearly silent pr- protagonist, right? E- exactly. Yeah. And, and Portal's other characters talk so much that it could probably Probably make mm-hmm. up for it. Um, I don't think you could do a Half Life movie with Gordon Freeman and not make him talk. And I yeah. think making him talk would ruin some of the magic of Gordon Freeman. To I, a don't certain extent. I don't buy it. Do you think it'd be fine? I don't buy that. So Gordon, every time someone does some <laughs> something about the best video game characters of all time, somehow. I don't know what you guys have been smoking. <laughs> Gordon Freeman tops the list. <laughs> Silent protagonist is simply a shell for you to put yourself in. They are not a thing. They have a goatee that was ugly in the 90s. Oh. And it doesn't matter. Like, that character doesn't matter. <laughs> That character is not a character. But that's why it's our favorite, because it's no. us. We love ourselves. We love ourselves. Oh, no. Time magazine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah no, yeah. I, I think I think you're you're definitely right about that. I just I'm fine having him speak. You, you can have him speak. It doesn't ruin anything. You, it, yeah, sure, if you have him speak and he's lame, yeah, that ruins it. Because uh-huh. he's much lamer than I imagine myself to be as Gordon Freeman. <laughs> but if you have him talk and he's cool, then it's a good character. Yeah. Hey, it just comes down to, like you were saying, uh, writing. Maybe, yeah. maybe just write him well. <laughs> and and from, what, from what Gabe Newell said yeah. in 2010, like, it seems like he and Valve, like, know they need a good script, right? Mm-hmm. Like, they know that yeah. they're not just, like like you pointed out, James, they don't give out their characters willy-nilly. They don't let other people just do things I with would them. rather see a TF2 movie than any of them. Oh, oh absolutely. That would be amazing. I've been, I've been yeah. think, ever since they started releasing those shorts, it's been like the most obvious thing in the planet for me. Mm-hmm. And the com- I read the comics, too, because they're equally as funny, and they have this, like, they gener- genuinely have, like, an interesting enough world to do something yeah. in TF2. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. I don't know why they don't hop on that first. Because I guess because it's not as much of a household name, yeah, right? Yeah, it's getting there. Maybe maybe, maybe Portal and Half Life are. Yeah. I'm biased in thinking that they're more household names than TF2 is. Well, you but put out a funny TF2 trailer and it's like yeah. competing with Pixar and and their shorts, their their meet the meet I the know. spy and all those I things know. were Fantastic. great. They were amazing. So, um, so so here's the last question I want to ask about the the Half Life and the the Portal movies. Or I guess Half Life specifically, what would happen both in your like would what would your opinion be, and also what would happen to the internet if they announced that Half Life <laughs> Three or Half Life Two Episode Three was a feature film and nothing else? Oh no! Not a game. They were just going to complete that story arc with a movie and call it done. I I don't like the internet. <laughs> I, really don't. I don't I don't like the internet. I don't like the fan culture. I don't like anyone watching this show right now. Oh, no. <laughs> no, I don't mean that. Uh, I, I, but I don't, like, the way that memes transform conversations yeah. just, just, like, screws up the world, bomb it all to hell, <laughs> nuke it, start over, let's have culture back from, from, let's, can we have Shakespeare again? <laughs> can we have Shakespeare before people are like, <laughs> He's got hoofs, you know that kind of thing. <laughs> that's that's what I would like. <laughs> so I, 
to, so to answer your question, yeah, uh, there would probably be something weird about memes that that cause <laughs> Half Life Three. Half Life Three is now something that doesn't even. It's not a. It's in a different universe entirely. It doesn't exist in reality. It exists just in people's heads, and to that extent, I don't care. <laughs> cool. I think that's a pretty good answer to end on. Uh, yeah, I'm. I'm. I, I guess just at the end of it all, I'm just excited to see what happens. It's interesting to know that it just exists or is going to exist or is being developed, right? Like, that's just cool info. Yeah. Uh, so let's move along to talk about the big topic this week of Ooh. GDC. We are – you're in town. You guys are based yeah. out of San Diego. San Diego. Usually. Yeah. Yep. So coming up, yep. luckily right, there's sun right this week. The wall. The soon to be wall. Soon oh. to be wall. Oh my god. Oh gosh. Yeah. Let's Ooh. hope not. Yeah. Let's not uh, let's not get political I won't get there. up in here. I won't go there. Um I won't go there. let's keep it to the games, okay? <laughs> so Game Developers Conference is in San Francisco. It's a week long extravaganza mm -hmm. of teaching games and talking about games and revealing games and it's gonna be it's pretty cool. We were there or I was there yesterday and then we'll be there all this week because the expo floor is open tomorrow. Right. Um and I, 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 let's talk about, like, kind of what me and James as, as writers are excited about and then also what you, Andy, are, like, excited about and what you're hoping to get out of it as a developer side of things, too. Sure. So, like, James, what, what do you think? What do you – is there anything that you, like, know you're pumped for oh, besides man. Planet Liquor or whatever it was? <laughs> well, first of all, Planet Liquor. Have you heard of Planet Liquor? I, I, <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to parse the pronunciation <laughs> of this word. Planet Liquor. Planet like like a thing in the sky, uh -huh. liquor, like actual some actual er. We're talking about like someone like, who licks things. Lick, yes, licks planets. Yes, uh, right. a liquor of planets. No, a, <laughs> I have not heard of this. It's the, the liquor you speak of. It's a video game uh, with a, no way. A, yeah, with a controller um, that you, with uh, little uh, holes in it that you stick popsicles in, and they have some kind of capacitive like. I don't know how it works, but you lick them, and it influences this game in some way. Uh, Sounds so like a great way to get some sort of disease yeah. at a con. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Since I'm I'm like the I'm the lowest rung on the ladder here uh, ladder here at PC Gamer, uh, I w have volunteered to try Planet Liquor. So I'm gonna try Planet Liquor. But what am I excited about at, at GDC? Uh, uh, it's just uh, mostly the culture seems to be. Uh, Pretty warm and inviting. It seems like uh, it's it's less about big announcements and more about just kind of uh, networking and talking and meeting all these people. I mean, there's a lot of that stuff too. But uh, so far, the highlights for me have just been meeting people. Um, I'm excited to see a lot of the enthusiasm for VR. Uh, also terrified by it. Um, and, and there's been a lot so far. They actually had to move yeah. the 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 talks, the panels about VR from the rooms they were scheduled in to from Moscone West to a room double the size in Moscone North because yeah. uh, the Moscone Center is where the event is being held for those who don't speak San Franciscan. Um, but it's just so many people are here for VR. I had somebody else yeah. who was here who's been to a couple GDCs now. This is only my second saying that this is some of the biggest turnout they've ever seen at the oh. event be probably because of VR. It's it's getting people to come out here. Yeah. Uh, and I don't consider myself sold on VR yet, but I am just happy to see enthusiasm um, and excitement for that kind of stuff and some really interesting ideas coming out of VR. Uh, otherwise, I'm excited to go to the panels mostly. Um, there's some really good uh, prediction panels. There's good discussions on culture. There's like some really esoteric programming stuff I'll never be able to understand. Um, uh, there's, you know, postmortems. There's just about anything you can imagine is there uh, and I'm excited to once this division review uh, stuff is done head down catch some and learn well what about you Andy yeah. so Andy you and Stopwatch Games don't have a booth within the right. expo floor right. but obviously we got a chance to play your game at this IGN event last night and then now you're here so is this kind of what you look for as a developer um, uh, uh, it's different for me every year I've been going to GDC for like 15 years now wow yeah, yeah. Um, maybe yeah I think 15 years um, and uh, um, 
Yeah, I used to host the IGF a whole bunch of years, the Independent Games Festival a- mm. awards show, so that was always a big deal for me, and eventually I ran out of jokes. <laughs> You'd think you would never run out of jokes to make about indie developers, but but I did. Um, <laughs> Uh, and so I sort of retired from that job. Um, and uh, so for me, GDC is often like summer camp because I get to see these people that I only see once or twice a year. And, and these are my favorite people in the world. They're, they're really, really fantastic, creative, energetic um, people. And, and when you see them once every year, or once every six months or something like that, there's always crazy new stuff going on. Mm-hmm. A lot to talk about. Um, so a, a lot of GDC is summer camp for me. Um, this year, uh, this is really, we've been doing a, a quiet open development on Tooth and Tail for a year and a half now. Um, but we finally decided, you know what, the game is like really cracking at this point. So let's, let's try and get out there and, and, you know, let people know that we have something really special. So um, this GDC for me is, is a lot of trying to, to find ways to, to get people to see the game and get to know it. Cool. Yeah, I noticed uh, uh, on the Tooth & Tail website that you guys posted patch notes mm-hmm. for, for the latest patch, and I, I thought that was so interesting that a game in pre-alpha that yeah, you know, you've know you been private. developing for a while. A pub- it's not a public game. It's not even on Steam. Yeah. It yeah. doesn't have a Steam page yet, uh-uh. but there's like patch notes for the game. It mm-hmm. seems like it's a very open way to, to yeah. like you said, it's very we, open. We have a private pre-alpha, um, which means that you know every week we might invite two or three people into it, um, and we've been doing that for like a year, year and mm-hmm. a half, something like that. Um, we have, I don't know if I mentioned this, we have some community members that have over a thousand hours in the game at this Damn. point. Um, it is like, it, I know we're going to get to the game later, but it's a game that we've really sort of boiled things down and made it simple the way that we did with Monaco. We tried to take stealth and boil it down and make it simple, but then not lose any of the depth of its source material. Um, and so in this case, the source material is real-time strategy games. So, but it's super, super simple to play. You can play it on a controller with just a few buttons. Um, and the game sessions are short, and we're trying to get rid of all this, the stress and exhaustion of playing uh, a lot of RTS games. Um, uh, but have it something, have it be something you can just play and play and play and play. And, and uh, you know, we're we're trying to build with like the pickup basketball version of the NBA. You know what I mean? Like I we, we're trying to build yeah. the RTS that is where you want to be king of the dorm room, not king of South Korea. Um, <laughs> and um, uh, so, like, we're just really excited about how our our pre alpha players have been um, uh, playing the game cool. and excited about the game. So it's. Uh, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm just, I'm totally pumped about it. I've, I've been playing it so much, and, and I, I think at this point, I think it's, at this point, I think I like it better than Monaco, so All right. I'm yeah. really excited. I like Monaco a lot, so that's, right. uh, yeah. So at GDC, what are you, uh, are, are there any panels you're excited for? You're yeah, looking to get out of it? Um, I mean, I, the, Monday, Tuesday is the indie stuff, and then Wednesday through Friday is, is the rest of the stuff. Uh, it's not just indie stuff, there's a, a there's a, a a variety of more like focused sessions right. over Monday, Tuesday. So, um, uh, yeah, the the VR stuff really interests me because it's um, uh, uh, I'm I'm a bit of a boy. I'm such a downer on the show. Maybe I'm just, <laughs> is it possible that I'm just a jerk and a downer all the time? Could no. be. I'm only just now realizing it. Me and James immediately say opposite things. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm a bit of a disbeliever of, of of VR, not not in the experience. I think it's an incredibly cool experience, um, but in the fact that I believe it's a giant boondoggle that's going to come tumbling down. Really? Um, I do. Yeah. I, I think 2016 will be the year of uh, excuses, and then 2017 will be the year of yeah, maybe this is before it was before its time. Uh, um, and I think because I'm seeing all of the same things that we saw with the Wii, with the original Wii, okay. where people are like, well. It's gonna be great if someone just comes up with a, the great the killer app, or it's gonna be it's gonna be great when they just take get the next generation of the hardware, or um, you know, uh, this I I hear or like you well if in order in order to make a good game for VR you have to really make it specifically for that hardware right yeah. you say that for the Wii as well yeah. and that and that's why Ubisoft doesn't you know, make Call of Duty for the Wii or whatever. <laughs> yeah. um, so I just hear a lot of the same things, and, and it just it just rings alarm bells in my head, of, uh, especially when you start talking about the, 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 the price of the hardware. Um, 
Uh, and also the fact that Valve, uh, I love Valve, but they're not great at follow through on hardware. Um, and the fact that they actually have the strongest position right now on hardware, everyone generally likes the Vive the best, at least the headset. Yeah. Um, uh, but, you know, it's, they have a little bit of a mixed track record with this kind of thing. Um, so I would actually probably put more faith in, in Facebook and Oculus um, uh, to really, really drive and invest it in it. But, um, but I'm not sure that... I'm not sure we're there yet in terms of content, in terms of the the price of the um, of the high quality uh, um, hardware. Um, anyways, this is you asked me about GDC. Um. <laughs> well, no, on on that, I mean, I I am more of the opinion that I think that those issues are going to come up, and that the technology is so cool that it will be able to weather that storm. It is that cool. It's way cooler than the Wii was. Yeah, Yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And so I think it'll be able to weather that storm, but I definitely agree with you in the sense that when I, I had a lot of hype for VR, and this year was the first time I actually got to use it. And when I first tried it, I was like, this is incredible. It's really compelling and amazing. I didn't realize how early it was. Mm -hmm. Like, that was, that was my reaction, was this is as cool as everyone says, but it's also much earlier than the hype lets on. So who can weather the storm? And that's why I think that if you're going to place bets on someone weathering this storm, it's going to be Facebook. It's yeah. not going to be Google. Um, Google tends to, to, to ditch their yeah. underperforming products. Um, it's not, it probably won't be Valve because Valve is easily distracted. They're like, squirrel! Um, <laughs> and... Uh, um, <laughs> Uh, so if I'm if I'm putting money on someone that can weather the storm and eventually create content for it, um, but it might not even be game content; it might be other types of experiences. Yeah. I would put my money on Facebook. Yeah, I'm and there was a there was a talk that Evan went to that um, about forty predictions basically of what VR would become uh, as it went on from Jesse Shell mm-hmm. uh, and. He was going. He he seemed pretty convinced that it was around a stay, basically. And he was saying that I, the headline of our article that I posted in chat just now was by 2025, robots will touch you in VR, <laughs> right? So it, it, he's got bold predictions that maybe I won't completely go into. But one of the things that's impressed me about VR at GDC specifically <clears throat> is um, Oculus has the biggest booth on the expo floor hmm. by far, right next to them is PlayStation and Sony who are showing primarily VR, PSVR stuff. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then also Steam or Vive, excuse me, just all the other names for them, Valve, (laughs) are also at the show doing demos and stuff, and they generally have kind of a more reserved presence at shows, and Mm -hmm. this year they have a little bit more of an overt one. Um, So everyone is ramping up, regardless of if it's... If it's gonna crash and burn in the next six months or, months or not, it's it's definitely palpable in the air that yeah. everyone oh, is for sure. ready for whatever yes. is gonna come. There's gonna be a lot of people pouring money and investment into content for it. So the, if I'm wrong, and I would be so happy to be wrong, I'd be so happy to be wrong. If I'm wrong, it will be because content creators find ways to create like over the moon compelling content enough mm. you know the 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 app that makes you buy the hardware and mm. and that's going to be hard to do with such a high price tag yeah. on some of this stuff yeah. but it, if i'm wrong it will be because of content i think not because of hardware yeah um, and the content's not there yet which is the biggest reason that i'm skeptical that like there's nothing out there um that provides a compelling enough experience for someone more than an enthusiast to actually buy hardware to experience it. I, I, I liked your comparison to the Wii, actually, because it is similar, you know, like you said, the Wii obviously was not nearly as a compelling experience as something like the so Vive it is. It sold really well for the first three years, and then yeah. there right. was no but, content after that. But the Wii and the Wii U uh, are, I think, really, really cool technology. I think the Wii U's gamepad is one of the coolest things that gaming has seen in a while, actually. You're, you're crazy. <laughs> I actually really like it. I think it's I think it's used for asymmetrical games. Like Nintendo Land with its asymmetrical yeah. games was amazing, right? Like that's the best use of asymmetrical gaming that we've seen yet. Um, 
although I guess it only has to really compete with Evolve and stuff like that, which is not the best Keep competition. Talking, nobody I like Evolve. Keep talking, nobody explodes. Is, there yeah, you go. it's, it's there and it's it's being that's showing up as like what asymmetrical gaming can do now on VR. Yeah, right. But like you said, with Nintendo, nobody made stuff for it. Mm-hmm. And as a result, the Wii and the Wii U have kind of been slightly disappointing systems compared to what they could have been. The the big difference, of course, is that um, the development platforms are much better and much easier yeah. to, to use and get for your, your average independent developer than the Wii was. Mm-hmm. The Wii was a nightmare to get onto as a platform, mm-hmm. um, and that's one of the big reasons that Nintendo has always struggled to, to get third-party content, that, that their platforms in, in the past have never been very good for developers, and nor very open. Um, I'm such a Nintendo fanboy, man. It, it breaks my heart sometimes. Oh, they're, they're so good at their first-party content. And, yeah. And, um, and that drives sales of those, those platforms, of course. And th- there is a difference here with VR in that the, um, the platforms, uh, it's not going to be driven based on first-party content. It's going to be based on some crazy third-party content that hopefully is out there. You know. Yeah. Well, uh, I, I, for one, I think it'll show up. Or if it doesn't, I think that... It will it will be able to weather that that kind of lack of it until mm-hmm. the technology gets better or those people do show up. Right. Um, Let's put a Zelda on it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why don't you call up Nintendo and suggest that? See, yeah, yeah. see if they'll see if they'll, they'll budge. <laughs> I I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised if they're working on VR, but who knows. Uh, so let's let's move along to our Cat Fantastic quiz. Oh boy! So this is one of the best parts of of the PC Gamer Show when we do it. And for those of you who don't know, the Cat Fantastic part of the quiz means nothing. Uh, it's just what we call it. But we're gonna do a little quiz. We had this quiz on the site earlier this weekend, um, and if you read it there, then this might be a little bit of a repeat for you. But the quiz is this: I'm going to t- say. A tip that appears on a loading screen of a game, and you have to tell me which game that loading screen tip came from. This is dumb. Uh, <laughs> and I, I'll give you I'll give you four choices basically to go along with that. You're not no backing up, no leaning back. You got to keep your crush me. <laughs> keep your eyes away from the screen. Um, All right. So we'll look at once again loading screen tips or hints or or messages or whatever you want to call them, and you got to pull what game it's actually from. Uh, the quiz on PCGamer.com is actually 16 questions long. We're not going to do all 16, but Good. I will tell you that some of these were a little bit brutal when I checked the <laughs> results. So oh boy. I apologize for that. Here we go. Uh, all right, Can we let's. Buzz in? <laughs> no, 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 no. This is a collaborative. You're helping each other. Oh, because yeah, it's, okay. it's such a hard quiz, I think. So the first one we'll go with is uh, sunglasses are an important accessory for reducing damage from the sun. And the choices are Deus Ex, League of Legends, Just Cause 2, or Borderlands the pre-sequel. Uh, oh, and once again, if you are in the Twitch chat or on watching on YouTube or listening on iTunes, play along at home. Is that, is that a League item? Is that a league item? I don't know. The wrong guy. Uh, me too. I don't know. <laughs> well, okay. So Deus Ex, right? He's got the the sunglasses, but that sounds like a humorous tip, yeah. not a real tip. There's so, no soul in those games. So just kidding. I would guess. I would guess it's a it's a just a, cause. Just cause. Yeah, those are kind of hokey action yeah. movie, fun. All right. The answer was actually League of Legends. What? And you know why? This is actually one of my favorite ones because this is one of the few things about League of Legends. One of the few Easter eggs I knew. Characters, there's a character in the game named Leona who is like a sun character, and characters who are wearing sunglasses in the game take one point less of damage from her attacks, (laughs) or from her like ultimate attack. So that tip is actually a genuine tip, even though esports are a serious, serious thing. (laughs) Uh, Don't worry, that was the only, that was the Uh, third guest, most guest answer on that question. All right, all right, yes. Here's a, here's a slightly easier one. Okay. When the time of the white frost comes, do not eat the yellow snow. And your choices are... I might know this. Elder Scrolls Three: Morrowind, The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt, Pillars of Eternity, or Planescape Torment. In The Witcher 3, isn't there a white frost Yeah, that sounds like a Witcher guy 3. Thing. That sounds like a Witcher 3. When the bad guys roll in, the white frost comes in or something. 
And it doesn't take yeah. itself too seriously. Yeah, yeah, it's got some humor. Is that your final guess? Yeah. Yeah. That is correct. That hey. is the Witcher 3. That one was, that one was pretty that. good. 56% of people got that one, so that wasn't terrible. Okay. Want to prevent en- the enemy from fleeing? Cripple the legs. Uh, your choices are Borderlands, Rainbow Six Siege, Fallout New Vegas, or Assassin's Creed Syndicate. Sounds to me like a Rainbow Six thing, personally. It's like a James was one of our resident Rainbow Six players. Oh, so wait, wait, is it Siege? Yes. You said, oh, not in Siege. Because Siege, their legs don't take that kind of damage. <laughs> like, you can't cripple them. Mm. So it's not that. It what might... are our choices again? Uh, it was Rainbow Six Siege, Borderlands, Fallout New Vegas, or Assassin's Creed Syndicate. I want to say you can target limbs in Vegas, New Vegas, uh-huh. right? I, yeah, I mean, it, you could in... The other ones, too. Yeah? No. I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm relying on Make you a guess. Here. Make a guess. Uh, uh, Vegas. Yeah. New Vegas. New Vegas. Baby. That is also correct. Hey. Right. And good well reasoning. That was, well that was the way to go. All right. This one's a mean one. Oh, cool. Fire at things until they die. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Another tip from this game that I'll give you as a bonus was don't get hit. <laughs> Nice. Your choices are Borderlands 2, Far Cry 4, Killing Floor 2, or Nuclear Throne. Oh, boy. <laughs> I'm uh, a, I would fire say it's, it's either things. Borderlands or Nuclear Throne. I would say it's, yeah, because it's kind of a cheeky. Mm-hmm. It's, I don't know, though. Out of those two, I'm out of I'm going to vote for, for Rami. Go Nuclear Let's go Rami. Throne. Let's go Rami. That is correct. All right. <laughs> and on, on top of that, that was the basically only 13% of people guessed that oh, one. Ooh. So good catch. Yeah, that was good that catch. was a good, good one. Catch. There are a couple in here where I think I made the like the the other guesses a little too close because like nobody got them. Like I, there was a question in here where I think one like or the it was the least guessed game of the list of four. Wow. So all right, all right. Let's grab another. Uh, Sand is overpowered. <laughs> Your choices are Terraria, Homeworld, Deserts of Karak, Diablo 3, or Minecraft. Oh, those are cruel. <laughs> well, it's not Diablo. There's no sand play in Diablo. Is there? Um, sand play? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> what does that even mean? I don't know. <laughs> the other games have sand play. <laughs> Just such a funny way to put it. <laughs> Uh, I don't think you can use sand in Homeworld, des- Deserts of Karak. That was going to be my guess because I know nothing about it. Oh. It, it takes place in a desert. Yeah, I know that. Okay. That's all I, I know. I, I figured. Really. Maybe you can use it. I mean, I've... I've Maybe it's powerful. I have, I've played both Terraria and Minecraft, and I don't remember seeing those. Um, but, I mean, people play those for hours and hours and hours, and they both have had... M- so many levels of development that those yeah. could have been added later. I would. It's got to. That's got to be reference to an in-community meme of some sort. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's, that's I mean. some good thinking. That's um, some good thinking. Which says to me it probably is Terraria or or Minecraft. Um, I like that logic. So I like that. I'm gonna say I think it's Terraria. Let's go Terraria. <laughs> That is correct. Whoa. All right. Hell yeah. That's some deduction. <laughs> yeah, there's a there's a gun in Terraria that shoots sand blocks. Uh, and when okay. you get trapped in a sand block, oh. it like suffocates you and you die incredibly quickly. It okay. just tears through you. Okay. And yeah, it's kind of become a joke beyond that. Nice. Uh, let's skip this one. <laughs> I'm skipping through a couple. I'm skipping yeah. through the easier ones. Oh, cool. Ha, ha, ha. Thanks, man. <laughs> um, We're doing well. You are. You guys are doing good. really Pretty well. Good. Yeah. Doing very, very well. Okay, here's another. Save often to spare your blood pressure. And the choices are XCOM 2, Divinity Original Sin, Civilization 5, or Fallout 4. Not Civ or XCOM. No. I, I'm going to say Divinity. I have not played Divinity, but I'll I'll defer to you. I think here. Divinity, not XCOM, because it's not. It wouldn't make a joke about it. it would and just XCOM say, kind of wants to encourage you not. Yeah, to say yeah, it. exactly. Um, Divinity has a sense of humor. I know that, and I know it's hard. All right, let's go Divinity. Yeah. 
That is correct as Whoa. well. Heck yeah. Right. And most, most people thought you were a quiz night. Yeah. yeah, no kidding. I think, for the record, I think this is the best anybody has done on, like, in live quizzes. Like, the internet, yeah. like, the chat always gets it right, right? But, like, this is a pretty hard sitting one here, you guys are doing really good. What can we say? All right, here's another one. Here's, here's one for you, James. I don't know. <laughs> staying in cover is the key to staying alive. Your choices are XCOM Enemy Unknown, Tom Clancy's The Division, Rise of the Tomb Raider, or Metal Gear Solid V, The Phantom Pain. Well, this had better be The Division. I don't think it is, because all the tools... He said it was for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he yeah. also hates Rise of the Tomb Raider and played a ton of Metal Gear Solid uh, V. Uh, yeah, and I think the tooltips in The Division... I don't think it's those last two, because Tomb Raider is, like, all jumpy, and I don't know. Uh, Panzerg 2 says every Ubisoft game. <laughs> <laughs> Collect the icons. Yeah, <laughs> the, the division mostly has like story tips and like okay. menu tips. I don't remember that one. It's pretty evident that you should be in cover. XCOM, it seems like the most important yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I would have guessed XCOM had he not yeah. tipped us on yeah. anything, but I don't know why he would tip you yeah. on it. He's trying to mess with us. It's, a, it's XCOM. It's okay, be XCOM. XCOM. I forgot this one, so let me check. It was XCOM. Oh, <laughs> oh, 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 oh. hey. All you right, know. we're almost, we're, let, let's do a couple more. We're almost done right. here. Um, I'll skip through this one, because I'm actually not sure entirely if that's a real tip. <laughs> the tip was, you will die if you can't breathe. But, wow. uh, yeah. All right. Um, we'll skip this one as well. I want to do the last one, because it's just mean. It's just straight mean. Okay. Actually, we'll do this instead. Play the game your way, in your underwear, naked, clothed. We're open world that way. Hmm. The choices are Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon, Borderlands, Mad Max, or Saints Row 4. That's tough. Uh, yeah, I'm going to... I would guess that it's Saints Row because it's more toilet humor than yeah. everything else. My next guess would be Blood Dragon, but I don't know if it like would venture that far into I, I, toilety, right? It's it, a little. I mean, I haven't played it, but I get the feeling that everything they they try and stay like everything is all '80s references. Not, yeah, yeah, it's you know, like it, hokey throwback stuff. Um, it's not really a throwbacky type of tooltip, but you never know. But let's go. But Saints Row is so, so simple. It's like too easy, right? No. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm going in circles. Really <laughs> All right, make a choice. Make a choice. Uh, Saints Row, let's go with it. Answer was Far Cry 3 Blood oh, Dragon. God damn it. Though most people said Saints Row, like 46%. Right. Okay. Sa for the record. So we won at Family Feud, but not at <laughs> Cat whatever quiz. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. The funny thing is Saints Row actually yeah. had, or excuse me, Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon had, I was looking at the wikis, like, tool tips, like, Loading screen tip page. I could have just made the entire quiz those, and it would have been hysterical. Like they were all amazing. The other one that I almost put, but it was too long, was sure your character can die repeatedly as he's sent back to the previous save point, but every time he does, he becomes a little more jaded. <laughs> like there were just a ton of those like that. One of them was like, if your character catches on fire, scream along, pretend it's karaoke. <laughs> like there were just a lot of really, really great ones. That's and finally, to end the quiz. Did you know that tips are shown during the loading screen? Oh, <laughs> okay. The choices are Rocket League, Gauntlet, Burnout Paradise, or Diablo 3. Oh. I've played enough Rocket League. Yeah. That you would think I would have seen it. I th Isn't that a Rocket League? It does sound like a Rocket it League sounds tip. Like a, it really sounds like a Rocket League tip. I've played a lot of that too, but I can't like... Oh my god. I, I'm, I, I'm, I'll be surprised if it's Rocket League, but I do think it is. I'm with you. It sounds like familiar. It's tip of the tongue-y, mm -hmm. Rocket league -y. And the answer was Gauntlet. What? Ah. And that was the newest one. Though, again, 50% of the people said Rocket League, so okay. I'm glad I, I had some good misdirection right, on that right. one. Gauntlet. Uh, that was our Cat Fantastic quiz for the week. If you are interested in playing the entirety of it, which there are a few more questions from that one, yep. I've posted the link into uh, Twitch chat. Also, you can go to pcgamer.com slash quiz, and you can find that quiz as well as the other ones we've done in the past. Yeah. Uh, hopefully, we'll be able to bring some more of those to you. I hope you guys had enjoyed. It was You guys did really well. Yeah. Did very did good. good. Nice to done, Andy. That was quality. Uh, as a reward, we're now going to play some uh, some Tooth and Tail, hey. which I'm excited it's about. Like I'm back at work. 
<laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, so while I'm setting it up, Andy, why don't